Before we get started, let's do a little mind trick. From the top of your head, how long do you think 1 million seconds is? How about 1 billion seconds? Okay, hold on to your answer because it'll be important for later. Have you ever wondered how do the ultra-rich invest their money? I mean, it must be a little different than most people, and you would be right. The ultra-rich, the billionaires, the best investors in the world have a set of principles that significantly lower their risks and maximize their results. For four years, this guy, Tony Robbins, hung out with the top 50 investors in the world to tell us the principles they use that made them so successful and how you can use them. I know that most of you guys are ready to find out where to invest your money to achieve financial freedom. I know this because it has been the number one question I get in this channel. Even though most of us know at some level that we cannot just put our money in one investment and expect it to make us super rich at no risk. It's just not realistic. We will need to learn how to protect our investments because there's many people out there that are looking to get a piece of your wealth. Imagine this, what if I tell you about an investment opportunity where you put 100% of the money, you take 100% of the risk, but I manage your money, and if we make money, I take 60% of the gains, but if the investment loses money, you lose money, but I still get paid. What do you say? I bet it took less than a second for you to know the answer. You would not play in a game that was rigged against you. But as Tony Robbins says, 90% of American investors hold mutual funds with terms very similar to these. I know what you're thinking. How do you convince 92 million Americans to these terms? As Jack Bogle says, founder of the Vanguard Group, is all marketing. Most people don't do the math. Now let me rephrase what I just told you in a way that mutual fund brokers try to approach you. Let's say that you invested $10,000 in my fund when you're 20 years old. Assuming a 7% annual return when you turn 85, you would have over $574,000. Sounds good, right? But something that I didn't tell you was that you will have to pay 2.5% in management fees and other charges. Doesn't sound like much, but now when you're 85, you will only have $140,000, meaning that you gave up over $439,000, about 77% of your financial growths, in fees. Fees and charges are things that the average investor does not pay the attention that it deserves, which can greatly affect the investment's potential growth. In the long term, fees that seem small compound over time. The ultra-rich do anything in their power to keep their fees and charges to an absolute minimum. This is one of the biggest motivators to seek as many tax breaks as possible or why they defer their taxes to be paid later because they will not earn as much with after-tax money because once the money is out of the investment, it cannot earn any more. Now, let's talk about you. What is the price of your dreams? Let's do a quick exercise to find out. Let me ask you, how much money will you need to make to be financially secure, financially independent, or financially free? You don't have to be right, just take a guess. You should write this on a piece of paper since we're gonna use this number later in the video. Do you have your number? Is it a million? Is it five million? Is it 500 million? Is it a billion dollars? Okay, chances are that your number you just wrote down might look a little intimidating right now, but we'll break it down in just a second. It is important to say that we as humans have a very hard time understanding big numbers. We hear the words millions and billions, even trillions being thrown around everywhere that we don't really understand the magnitude of these numbers. Now at the beginning of this video, I asked you to guess how long is a million seconds and how long is a billion seconds. Are you ready for the answers? A million seconds comes up to be 12 days. A billion seconds comes up to be 32 years. Were you close to the answer? This is just to illustrate how little we understand the magnitude of these numbers and how the number that you just wrote down might greatly exceed what you actually need to live the life you desire. Now, let's break down the cost of your dreams. First, let's look at financial security. How much do you spend in living expenses, like your mortgage, utilities, food, transportation, insurance? How would you feel if these five things were paid for for as long as you live, without having to work to pay them? How would your quality of life be if this happens? Much better, I suppose. Now, in the US, the average basic expense of a household is a little bit over $34,000. 
Tony tells us to multiply this number, your yearly expense number, by 20, and this is the number you will need to be financially secure. Now, there's two phases to achieve this goal. The accumulation phase is when you save and invest your money to get to your target. And the decumulation phase where you enjoy the money making you more money without you having to work. Now, when you're accumulating money, you can invest in vehicles with higher return, but with a little more risk. In the decumulation phase, you are using your investments to live without having to work. Then you switch your investments to a safer, more conservative return. Think about the number you originally wrote down. If you actually do this exercise, you'll be surprised that the dream of financial security is probably a lot closer than you previously imagined. And this is just financial security. You can do the same process to know the exact amount of money you need to achieve financial freedom. This is not just to cover your basics, but to live the lifestyle you want. By breaking down how much your lifestyle spends in a year, multiplying it by 20, according to Tony, you will have the target number you need in safe investments to be able to afford this lifestyle without having to work. Now, let's talk about the actual investment strategies these ultra-rich, high-performing investors use. Now, we've all heard to never put all of your eggs in one basket, but how important is this really? According to David Swanson, an institutional investor who took Yale's portfolio from 1 billion to over 23 billion, says it's extremely important to diversify. Remember the market crash of 2008? Many people lost their retirement funds, their homes, their savings. It was a dark time. Not very much for Ray Dalio though. The founder of the largest hedge fund in the world lost only 3.9%. That is 3.9% of his gains, meaning in average, he still made money. Now to invest, you need to have two buckets, your secure bucket and your risk growth bucket. In your secure investment bucket are investments that do not normally bring very exciting returns, but you're also not taking very much risks. Meaning, you won't lose nearly as much money when the market drops. And trust me, it will. These investments are things like money markets, bonds, CDs, market linked CDs which bring higher returns, your pension if you have one, low interest annuities, be careful with this one, they might have lots of hidden fees, and the last one, security notes. I won't go in much detail on how they work since I already covered most of them in my investing basics video. Now, of course, you will have to take a look at each individual asset and institution issuing it to assess its validity. Your risk growth bucket is where you take more risks, but you can get higher returns. Notice how I said can. The higher risk is guaranteed, but the higher return isn't. The most common risk growth assets are equities, like stocks, ownership in companies, mutual fund indexes, or ETFs. Also real estate where you can buy the actual building and use it as a rental property or flip it for a profit. Or you can buy real estate investment trusts. Security notes can also be riskier depending on which one you choose. Now in this book, Tony says that many people make the deadly mistake of investing the majority if not all their savings into their risk growth bucket. As Swanson says, the market will lose 50 to 70% at least once in your lifetime. So you do not want most or all of your life savings at risk. There are three factors that can help you determine how much risk you want to take. Number one, your stage in life. How much time do you have ahead of you to make mistakes and recover if necessary? If you're younger, you can be more aggressive since you have longer to recover in case of a loss. Your available liquidity. If you have a high income and have a good gap between income and expenses, you could afford to make more mistakes and still make up for it. Number three, your risk tolerance. This all depends on you and what gives you peace of mind. There are people who are comfortable taking more risks than others. Knowing what kind of risk level you're comfortable with is also very important. Unlike many investors who try to anticipate what the market will do and put their money and other people's money at risk, the best investors in the world know that they are likely to be wrong. So they design an asset allocation portfolio to protect them even if they are wrong. This way, they can make money in the long run even if they lose in the short term. This is why diversifying is so important. 
As important as these two buckets are, there's a third bucket which is just as important. Your dream bucket. You put money in this bucket to enjoy. To buy yourself your dreams right now. That's the purpose of the original two buckets, right? To better the quality of your life. The purpose of this bucket is for you to spend and enjoy. So whether that is date nights with your significant other or saving to go to the Bahamas or buy yourself a home. There's a couple of ways that you can put money away in your dream bucket. You can take a percentage of your income and put it away until you save enough to buy your dreams. Or when your growth bucket gets a big hit and makes positive growth, you can take the winnings and divide them between all the buckets. This way you will be excited to keep earning more, saving more and investing more effectively. Because ultimately, you are doing this to better your life and achieve that dream that you're pursuing. Alright guys, this was my take on Tony Robbins' book, Money, Master the Game. Incredible book. This book goes down in my top favorite financial books because it has practical advice that you can take action on. It is impossible to fit all the information in this book in a short video like this, so I definitely recommend the read. If you like this video and you want to get the book, I got the affiliate link in the description of this video. As always guys, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next